Well, hello there, guys. Good morning from the mountains and wherever you're from. Let's talk about the boots. We got the Mac V high top, lightweight Mac V1 boots. Yeah. At under 14 ounces, these will probably be the lightest but tough boots you will ever try. So if you don't know Go Ruck, they have a really good program. They actually organize rucks all around the world. I actually participated in a, in a few and hosted a few back in the day when I used to train people. Good times, man. So if you're not out there rucking and you're interested in the outdoors or any of this stuff, you are wrong. You need to be rucking. Go Ruck also makes these kind of silly rucking bags that I never really got into, but they make boots and shoes. And I'll tell you what, guys, I've been playing with these boots, the Mac V ones for over a year and a half now. And yeah, I'm sold. The weight, the features, the price, it's good to go, man. It is an American company. The boots, mine were made in Vietnam and hey, there's a lot worse places that shit could be made, um, especially to give you an affordable price. So let's get into it. I wanna read a couple points that sold me to reach out to them. So lightweight at about 14 ounces, stripped down to the bare bones, all right? So no extra bull crap on these boots. No zippers, don't do that stuff, guys. Wide toe box, good stuff. They have a 13 millimeter offset. What does that mean? That is your heel to toe drop. I'm happy to see this barefoot and minimalist shoe craze has kind of gone away. We've had enough injuries over the last couple years. People realize that's stupid. Minimalist shoes can be as simple as Converse Chucks. 60 bucks, those are your minimalist shoes. You should not be rucking in stuff like that. First of all, rucking, you're adding weight to your body, okay? On the good side, that is what builds up bone density and strength and prepares you for carrying a load somewhere. That means that extra load, you're actually gonna want some cushion on your feet, all right? You don't wanna be rucking barefoot, it's dumb. You also want to have a little bit of a heel to toe drop. That's why military combat boots have big old heels on the back of them. So it adds to your height a little bit. You're going to have to build up your ankle strength because a lot of guys in basic training, they roll their ankles. They're not used to that heel. But what that does is it takes the stress off your Achilles tendon, all right? So if you've got a flat foot shoe and you're doing a lot of heavy activity, if you grew up running around barefoot and being in minimalist shoes, you might be okay. But for the other 98% of the Western world, we didn't grow up that way. We grew up and we evolved wearing stuff. And I mean evolved in your lifetime. You grew up wearing stuff with a heel to toe drop. So if you took flat foot shoes and just started rucking like that, yeah, it'll start to mess you up right back here on the Achilles. So that 13 millimeter drop is not so much that it takes a long time to get used to and puts extra strain on your forefeet. It's just right. Also, proudly not waterproof. Crazy idea coming from this outdoor guy. All the other gear guys, outdoor people, they love their waterproof shoes. In my grunt days, I could not stand them. I think it's a silly idea. If something is totally waterproof on your feet, we're talking about those big old clod hopper freaking rain boots. That's the only truly waterproof boot, okay? So if it's truly waterproof, what does that mean? Water can't get in, but vapor also can't get out. Do not get sold into this Gore-Tex and other fancy technology that say your boots are waterproof and breathable. It does not exist. If something is breathable, it's not waterproof. So that means they also have the drain holes on them because your feet will get wet. So it's better to let your feet drain and it's better to have this light, thin, breathable material so your feet can breathe. Your feet are gonna get wet, guys. Let's just face that fact. So you're better off changing your socks repeatedly and that'll actually help dry your boots if you're not in a wet environment anymore, but it'll take care of your feet. So when I saw the proudly not waterproof, I was like, yep, these guys know what they're talking about. And as it turns out, Mac V1, the name of the boots that comes from the Mac V Sog guys. Podcasts are coming out left and right about these dudes. Probably some of the baddest guys that came out of Vietnam. Probably some of our best fighters we've had since then. So when those guys decide to put together a boot and look at the experience they dealt with, you might want to pay attention to that. One thing, I got the Mac V1s, look at the sole. 
they do have a Mac V2 and it has a lot more of traction on the bottom of it. I specifically got these boots because I wanted to have a cross terrain type boot. The more traction you have on the bottom of your boots, it's going to be good for mud and snow and stuff like that. But it's not as comfortable on the concrete or very hard surfaces like hard pack trails and stuff. Some people are okay um, taking off-road boots, <laughs> trail boots onto concrete, but I haven't ever liked that. So I would usually, if I'm rucking on concrete most of the time, I like boots like this. Not a crazy sole, but good enough to get around. So maneuvering around in muddy environments like this, I have been in some snow with them. Yeah, they're gonna be a little more slippery because you don't have that traction down there. But for me, going back and forth between hard, soft, and wet surfaces, no big deal. As a matter of fact, one of the most recent backpacking trips I did, uh, we had to do a lot of water crossings and wet rocks are very dangerous. These boots with the wimpy looking sole actually perform better than my favorite uh, hiking boots, the Merrill Moabs. So I was impressed with that. But if you are mostly off-road, trails going through brush and you're not going to be rucking and hiking on concrete you might want to look into the the mac v2s that's probably going to be the traction that you're going to want now these are suede which is a very light thin leather it's a form of leather that means a hell of a lot less break in time on the downside it could limit the durability i've had no issues with these so far but just keep in mind the harder the leather is the more break-in you're gonna have, and that's gonna hurt your feet no matter how tough you are. But because the leather is so much harder, you're going to get a lot more use out of it. But as we've seen in the GWAT days, we went from black hard leather boots, and mostly because of the arid desert environment, we switched to the suede boots. So soldiers could break them in a lot faster coming up to a deployment. Their feet would breathe and, and be a lot better off on deployment than those big old heavy leather boots. I still love the black jungle boots. I still got a pair. But when I'm on my feet doing chores and stuff all day long, uh, patrolling, rucking and all that stuff, these are my freaking go-to boots. Now with any kind of combat boot, of course, you're going to destroy your laces. It is inevitable. So after about five months, I shredded my go ruck laces, but no big deal. I have plenty of those laying around. I replace these with my garment boot laces and now we're good to go so if you're ready to invest in your feet 170 200 bucks for the other versions the low top version what we call the hiking shoes you can get those as low as 60 bucks for the mac v1s that's a freaking outstanding deal but if you're willing to spend the money and you want the boots that actually come up higher you know 170 to 200 bucks for some mac v's and you would make a good decision. Eventually, I will get a hold of some of the Mac V2s and play with those and let you guys know. Until then, thanks for watching. Get out there and do some fit stuff, man. Carry your gear, test yourself, test your feet.